What is up, craps? Dan JJ back here from Rump Your Bets with another free pick for it. It's going to be in college football for Friday, September the 24th. Game's going to be played between the Charlotte 49ers and the Middle Tennessee State Blue Raiders. Current betting spread is Charlotte minus three. Total 55 and a half. So last week's solo vid uh, ended up on the losing end, laying the three and a half. In the first half with UCF, um, felt that really could have gone either way, but uh, credit to Louisville for not only their O-line looking really good, but Cunningham putting on quite a show. Um, it was mentioned by me that I felt he would really have to have quite a game uh, for this team to keep pace and look 265 through the air and another 100 on the ground, especially a lot of critical third downs converted by him with his legs. Uh, really made a, made a pretty big difference. Now, uh, took it slow early on with the half unit plays with these videos, uh, but Saturday I bumped up to a full unit with the sample now growing larger. Um, it resulted in a little two in one day in uh, college foosball and a near sweep with how that one total ended. Uh, remember, guys, just or, and gals, just because there's 50 plus games on Saturdays doesn't necessarily mean you need to be betting action recklessly. Um, I had Buffalo over their team total at 20.5, ECU plus 10, and Wazoo USC over 61.5. 61.5. It was quite close there for the sweep, but two and one uh, is never something to cry over. Much like the NFL, let's uh, same to keep some momentum brewing here now in college. And uh, without further ado, let's uh, let's get right to it. So a nice little early start here for a Friday. Well, a little earlier, I guess, not super early. Six thirty Eastern. Um, you know, you know, not too early, but relax, Hardos. Uh, this is actually a spot that I have quite favorable. Both of these teams come off a bad loss, but regardless, there's value to be had here. And what I have is a bit of an overreaction. I actually like this game over the number of 55 and a half. like this up to 57. Got this at FanDuel in New Jersey, um, right at minus 110. Um, and it's for a few different reasons. So, uh, sure, both these teams' offenses looked putrid last week. And weather wasn't the best for Charlotte. And Middle Tennessee had, like, a head-scratching offensive showing, uh, to say the least. Um, we cannot forget, though, that these two teams are more offensive-minded than defense and, and both play at above-average tempo. Uh, this is a game that should draw a total near 60, yeah, here we are at 55 and a half. Likely all to do with the abysmal showing last week, and which brought only a, a lower opener here, but then under steam as well to help. So start with the home team, Charlotte, who is uh, more than content to be 2-1 and one at this point um, with their upset uh, win against Duke to start the year. This offense can be quite fluid, as shown in the Duke game with how good they were, but then has the other side of them, which was what they looked like in the Georgia State game. Again, that was a weird game in general, though. But when clicking, this 49ers offense is quite balanced, and this offense can move fit, uh, fast at times. I think a lot of people uh, if, you know, look at this team and think, oh, it's a ground and pound, run clock. I mean, their offensive tempo is definitely uh, above average, and they're a much better offense at home, which helps here because they'll, they'll be home. Now, Mark Carney took over this offense uh, from the QB spot, or from the QB coach's spot. Uh, after an excellent 2019 offensive season for the 49ers. They picked up right where they left off versus Duke and Gardner-Webb, but did hiccup last week, as mentioned. This offense likely gets back on track here against Middle Tennessee State, who has issues not only defensively, but also offensively. And I know if we're talking a total, that might not be the greatest thing, but I do think this spot makes sense for Middle Tennessee State to get going offensively. Um, Charlotte's led by senior dual-threat quarterback Chris Reynolds um, and various other playmakers. Should be a bounce-back season, uh, as the cool kids say, for the 49ers in this spot. Um, you know, we all have the occasional bad day at the office. We'll uh, look at last week as nothing more than that of a hiccup. Um, speaking of uh, often well-balanced offenses that hiccup, it's the third time I've used that word, by the way, hiccup, four. The Blue Raiders did uh, much of the same. Uh, Blue Raiders' big issues are on the offensive line right now, where teams have been swarming past thus far. Uh, good news for them is that Charlotte really doesn't generate much pressure at all on the defensive end. Regardless, I'd expect quick action, you know, uh, plays, uh, delays maybe, HP delays, uh, you know, to best nullify... The weakness for Middle Tennessee, which is, again, this offensive line, you can't magically make your O-line good overnight and on a short week, but you can run your offense to best neutralize, you know, uh, uh, production with misdirections, counter screens, etc. If this gets um, set early and the safeties are forced to move up to stop it, this would, of course, open up the down-the-field passing game. The Middle Tennessee uh, is used to having success on offense, um, and now we'll only be led by Chase Cunningham at quarterback, Bailey Hockman, stepping away from college football. This team used to use a split QB, um, or was using two quarterbacks th thus far. Uh, but now it's Cunningham's chance to shine, and, and he brings Middle Tennessee a, a little more mobility at the Q QB position, which is better for this offensive line anyway. Uh, Middle Tennessee also does play quite fast, uh, and, and they move they move the, the, the sticks quickly as far as the play clock goes. Um, so I expect this game to move quickly for actually both teams. More possessions, obviously, will lead to more points. Um, but here's my big thing here. Do we overreact to that poor showing from both offenses last game and dodge this game entirely? Uh, and even maybe even bet the under? Uh, or 
do we understand that these two teams have better weapons on offense versus their defense, have coaches that are more offensive-minded than defense, um, and play at above average tempos when they have the ball? Again, Charlotte is looked at as a team that plays the ball slow, ground and pound, but they're very effective running the football when their offense is humming. They're at home, and I'd expect much of that anyway. Previous poor showings from both these offenses is why this total is sitting at 56 or 55 and a half, pending your book. But it's in that neighborhood when it should be up in the 60 neighborhood, or at least topping at 60. So give me here the over 55 and a half uh, with the slight overreaction after a bad week from both. So again, 55 and a half, that's minus 110. FanDuel in New Jersey. May the odds be ever in our favor. I want to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, thumbs up. Create some fake accounts more. Thumbs up. If you did not enjoy, I hope a tree falls into your living room. As always, drop comments below your thoughts in the vid. Let me know who well you like for this Friday slate. We have content lined up all weekend on this channel. Uh, I'll be back talking college football on Saturday. I have the Print Factory show coming up in a bit for with the Run Pure folks or DFS crew. Then the NFL show on Sundays, again with the Run Pure crew. Um, we'll have live shows, UFC, NASCAR, and of course, NFL. Um, so stay tuned for all of it. Head over to runpurebets.com, see what we're all about. But folks, as always, gamble responsibly, stay safe, and thanks again for watching.